Welcome, everyone. I'd like to introduce Girl Blue, who is the accomplished singer, songwriter, and producer, Arielle O'Keefe. Her emotionally driven pop music contains real feeling and storytelling with gorgeous melodies and catchy hooks. She's widely praised for excellent lyricism and powerhouse vocals. She releases music independently from Toronto, New York. You're in for a treat, folks. Let's listen. Hi. Thank you guys for having me. I'm glad to be here. And thank you to uh, my friend Sarah on the Clean and Healthy team for asking me to come and be here. Um, so I'm just gonna play some songs for you. This is a song called Lolita. <laughs> Standing around like one of those girls I had seen in a movie. The whole world was a movie back then. I had my sunglasses on, I wanted to be seen without seeing shine. Holy, I wasn't really in it. I didn't really get it. Now I was every single girl, I was nobody else, I was so sure of myself. I was 15 in my head. He was a hollow I lost my cool somewhere along the way. The nightmare in the hallway. I had to learn how to look away. I lost my cool, no electricity. Hard rain on the concrete. A sweet melt and little girl dreams. They said I want a big life, not a house I would have been like. Where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? They said everything I do for your father removed from my old life. Where is it taking me? Where is it taking me? I, I was standing on my best friend's balcony Feeling a certain kind of wise at 17 Thinking the flare on the lens was the real thing And she was with her boyfriend in the back room Always chain smoking cigarettes and looking at the moon Thought I was really honest I didn't really get it all. I lost my cool somewhere around the bend. It's not even making lessons. Holding on to all that innocence. So I lost my cool. I found it in a chemical dream. The whole world was a movie screen. And Heights and Avenue is melting. I said, oh, I want a big life, not a house I would have been like. Where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? Said, everything I do, I feel farther removed from my own life. Where is it taking me? Where is it taking me? portrait of my mother. She said, stay young, stay young, stay young, stay young. I see my baby brother that had just come on down. It's all I've been living. Don't know till you're in it. That all of a sudden you can't get, get back.
Thank you. Gotta love a live stream. <laughs> no, I really appreciate you playing at all. So thank you. I see the emotion. Hey! All right. Um, this song is called Fire Under. Yes, I remember how I met you, but we will not talk about it. Reminiscence what we left behind to get where we are now, to get where we are now. Yet sometimes it feels like we are still those young and stunning strangers. You threw a shadow in my spotlight. I had a song called Danger. I had a song called Danger, but now I'm swimming in nothing. Only blues are on my side. I got nothing to hope for, honey. I got nothing to hide. Now I'm swimming in nothing. Only blues are on my mind. And that ocean's endless deep. And that ocean's endless wide. But every time you look in my eyes, it's like fire underwater. Fire underwater. Every time you look in my eyes. It's like fire underwater, fire underwater. I go down, 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 down. Did I come up burning every day? Yes, I remember how I met you, all the serendipities and details. It's these kinds of moments that give me a reason to believe, give me a reason to believe. Every ship that I had kept in had been lost to stormy weather. Till you came along and I thought we just might get home. I thought we might get home together, but now I'm swimming in nothing. Only blues are on my side. I got a deal of a fun. I got nothing to hide. Now I'm swimming in nothing. And only blues are on my mind. And that ocean's endless. And that ocean's endless. Why? for you. Um, this is a song that uh, I'm going to have out on, on Spotify on October 9th. It's a song called The Woods. And if you're not familiar with my music and you do like it, you can find everything at Girl Blue Music. Uh, Instagram, 
Spotify is Girl Blue. Website is girlbluemusic.com. All that stuff. Um, that's where you can get it. Okay, this is called The Woods. Just... Thank you. Thank you so much. Turn back up. All right. I'm going to do uh, two more songs. Is that okay? Till seven. So here's a newer one. And uh, 
Yes, called Heaven. song for you and thank you for listening i'm happy to uh, support a cleaner and healthier new york it's called call me home Nauseous half disasters. The calm is not so quiet in my head. It says you drink too much, you're not in love with anyone. You'll never say the things you never say. Oh, it all seems really simple in a picture. Somebody you don't know always works hard and 
you're always just nursing some hangover. Guilt tripping over homeless works to write. Oh, I've been lost, 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 brother. Oh, I've been blinded by the sun and the fire. I got more, more, more than I can shoulder. But I'll be fine when I find my way home. After nauseous half to last and I swear I'll get my act together soon because this is not at all what I imagined when I thought of all the things that I might do. Oh, it all seems really simple when you're little. Naivety such a fuzzy friend hey, I'm not saying I'm a wreck no, I am rule no, I just mistook the beginning for the end and I got lost 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 brother I got blinded by the sun and the father I got more more like a shoulder, but I'll be fine when I find my way home. Look, sometimes love is the reflection of a building in the water on a night when everybody stays at home. Sometimes love's a puddle, a puzzle piece, obsolete and soggy, that becomes a whole new picture on its own. So we can bitch about how fast the world is spinning. Or we can use the orbit for our own new view. Oh, I know love will be the answer to my wandering. Maybe I got lost so I could find you. I think I got lost so I could find you. So when you lost, 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 brother, and when you fly too close to the sun and the father, and when the world is more than you can shoulder, you come and find me, you can call me home. Come and find me, you can call me home. Come and find me, call me home. All right, that's all for me. Thank you guys so much for having me. Enjoy the rest of the night, congratulations. Thank you so much, that was great. If folks wanna just unmute yourselves for a minute so we can show her some love, that that's would be clap. awesome. Thank you so <laughs> much for the wonderful performance. I hope Thank everyone you. enjoyed it as much as I did. Yeah, Thank you so much. You can also so clap much. in the bottom uh, with our little emoticon things down there too. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. And so now we're just going to slide back into our program. And I'm going to put back up our order of show. And before I hand it over to Kathy, uh, our executive director, I just want to remind folks we have a silent auction running, which is going to close promptly at 815. Mark your clocks. Um, the auction link is on the screen. And um, you can also support Clean and Healthy New York. Uh, we have a goal of raising $5,000 between the uh, actual events of both the um, trivia night that we had on Tuesday night and tonight's uh, award ceremony and concert. And uh, you can text Bold Vision to 44321 
or you can go straight to the website if you're on a computer. Uh, there's a bit.ly link or you can use your phone to take a snap of that QR code and it'll take you right there. Uh, we've already raised about $3,500 so you can help us close that gap to 5,000 and we would love you for it. Um, and so I am going to now pass it over to our executive director, Kathy. Thank you, Bobby. Um, as a thank you for joining us tonight, we are sending all of the registered guests an organic cotton face mask donated to Clean and Healthy New York by Naturepedic. So if you didn't register, it's no problem. We're sending a link in the chat to do so now. Uh, I'm not sending it. Someone is sending a link in the chat to do so now. So you can also see on the screen um, our run of show, our agenda for the night. And uh, I'd like to spend a minute or two thanking those who made this night such a success. And that is our sponsors. So a shout out to our Bold Vision sponsors who support us time and time again, both tonight and throughout the year. Special thanks to Seventh Generation and the American Sustainable Business Council for their extraordinary generosity. Next, next, I'd like to thank our honorary hosts whose commitment to promoting the event, contributing financially, obtaining silent auction items, and serving on various committees made this event possible. And last, but certainly not least, we owe a huge debt to our awards selection committee who lended their expertise in worker safety, just transition, and sustainable business from the inside out. We couldn't have done it without you. And we want to thank one of our uh, award selection committee members, Gavin McIntyre, who is holding the award that he himself made that each of the winners will receive uh, after. The event. Thank you, Gavin. Okay, so we hope you're curious about Clean and Healthy New York's bold vision and why we chose a healthy business frame for our award ceremony tonight. There was a time when Bobby and I were mired in an approach to toxic chemicals focused on the end of the pipe. While addressing our nation's le legacy of pollution is essential, we wanted to get ahead of the curve avoid the smokestacks, water pollution, and natural resource damage from toxic chemicals, and apply ourselves upstream to prevention. We went from single chemicals and single product sectors, lead in jewelry, chlorinated tris in childcare items, bisphenol A in baby bottles, to pushing for radical transparency of ingredients and chemicals in everyday products, as well as restrictions on entire classes of chemicals, such as and I'm going to test myself now. Polybrominated diphenyl ethers and poly, per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. We also launched our national Getting Ready for Baby Market campaign to protect our most vulnerable children zero to three years old of age. This work is done in deep collaboration and is ongoing. As we look to the future, Clean and Healthy New York developed a roadmap for New York's environmental health. Leadership, to turn off the tap on toxic chemicals and build a sustainable, just circular economy. This roadmap contains four routes to achieve this bold vision. They are full transparency and disclosure, action to restrict chemical classes and immediate action where the pro problems are biggest, innovation and solution-oriented green chemistry, and recognizing that environmental racism, climate disruption, and a burgeoning solid waste crisis are all intersectional and to align them with our environmental health campaigns. We're so glad you're with us on this journey. Now I'm going to turn it back to Bobby, who has an important message, and then we'll begin the award presentations. So I just, one more time, gonna remind you that you can support our, uh, our work. Um, as Kathy said, we are looking to the future and have um, really um, been focused on 
driving the, that sustainable, non-toxic and just uh, circular economy. One of those ways that we've been doing that is uh, through our state policy. Kathy named some of those things, but really this year we've had real victories in New York State. We've gotten the Child Safe Products Act passed. We've gotten, uh, we've closed the hazardous waste loophole making fracking waste actually count as hazardous waste. Uh, we've made a uh, great headway with our market campaign with the with Bye Bye Baby. They announced a uh, priority chemicals uh, policy addressing um, formulated products like cleaning products and uh, baby products, uh, personal care products. And they, we also have been advancing and really leveraging a longstanding law in New York State around cleaning products to drive transparency in the marketplace. Uh, New York State has. Uh, a law that would require that and uh, is moving forward with regulations. But even just the conversations we've had in New York State have dramatically changed the landscape for what kind of transparency and disclosure companies are making across the country. So I hope you will give generously to our campaign this evening. You can text Bold Vision to 44321. You can go straight to the website. You can click that QR code. Um, and don't forget, we've got great items in our silent auction. The link is there. It's also all in the chat. And uh, we hope you will support. Thanks so much. Thank you, Bobby. So without further ado, our first award is for a bold vision for healthy food. And the award will be presented by David Levine, president and co-founder of the American Sustainable Business Council. ASBC represents a broad range of over 250,000 businesses. It's the leading business organization serving the public policy interests of responsible companies, their customers, and other stakeholders. They advocate for legislation that supports sustainability, equity, and justice from a business perspective. David? Great. And first of all, I just want to congratulate Clean and Healthy New York, especially Kathy and Bobby. I and mean, this is years and years of work to sort of build the, the platform and that led to a momentous set of legislation being passed this year. And, you know, it's just a phenomenal body of work, but it didn't come easy. And it's, you know, Clean and Healthy New York. It is all the other allies but it's, it's the incredible work of, of these two phenomenal women leaders that I just need to mention. You know, that's the award. That's the biggest award right there. But, you know, you know, as the American Sustainable Business Council, we're especially excited that this year, Clean and Healthy New York decided to honor the best of the best of businesses in New York State. These are businesses that understand that businesses mean caring for the environment. It means equity and justice, you know, providing supportive workplaces with great benefits and so much more that they're the businesses that are helping us to lead the way towards a more just and sustainable economy and future. You know, the award that I'm giving for, you know, healthy food tonight, you know, over the last five years, my family started a farm here in the Hudson Valley. I'm in the, an old post and bean barn now, you know, in Gallatin, New York. But, you know, moving through the struggles of keeping a family farm alive has led us to many collaborations, not only for our farm's benefit, but for many small farms in the region and for the health and well-being of our community. So it's it's with an even greater admiration and my pleasure to present the award for Bold Vision for Healthy Food to Soul Fire Farm. So let me just take a minute to tell you a bit about them using most of their own words. So Soul Fire Farm is a BIPOC-centered community farm committed to ending racism and injustice in the food system. They raise and distribute life-giving food as a means to end food apartheid. With deep reverence for the land and wisdom of the ancestors, they work to reclaim the collective right to belong to the earth and to have agency in the food system. They bring diverse communities together on this healing land and to share skills, 
on sustainable agriculture, natural buildings, spiritual activism, health and environmental justice. They are training the next generation of activist farmers and strengthening the movements for food sovereignty and community self-determination. Soul Fire Farm is doing some of the most dynamic education and advocacy work to end racism and environmental harm in the food system. They are taking food justice advocacy from the retail to the wholesale level by not only operating a BIPOC owned sustainable farm, but training the trainer and seeding the next generation of BIPOC farmers and advocates. Soulfire Farm's bold vision for a healthy future is expressed in their mission statement. They are training the next generation of activist farmers and strengthening the movements for food sovereignty and community self-determination. Boy, did they deserve this award tonight. You know, so it's my great pleasure to present the bold vision for healthy food to Soulfire Farm and Tena Asili, who's the board chair, will be accepting the award. So Tena, over to you and congratulations. Much. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I, my name is Taina Seely. I am the board chair of Soul Fire Farm. I'm also a local musician. Um, and um, I'm just so grateful to be here on behalf of the entire team at Soul Fire Farm. Uh, we are honored and grateful to accept uh, Clean and Healthy New York's bold vision for a healthy future, future sustainable food award. And I'd like to recognize our ancestors and all of the forebearers who made the road we walk. Our work at Soul Fire Farm is dedicated to uprooting racism and seeding sovereignty. And there are many ways that our team, in collaboration with Black, Indigenous, and people of color, BIPOC communities throughout the nation, have worked towards this vision. In Grafton, New York, where the farm is located, we are regenerating 80 acres of land through Afro-Indigenous farming and forestry practices and sharing the harvest of the land with people impacted by state violence. Um, we work to equip the next generation of black and brown farmers through training, mentorship, and connection to resources, as well as healing ancestral land-based trauma. And we mobilize the public to create a racially just food system by offering talks, articles, and workshops on reparations and policy change. Um, at Soul Fire Farm, we also believe that to free ourselves, we must feed ourselves. And the challenges that the COVID-19 outbreak is posing to our communities exemplify the need for collective food sovereignty. Food apartheid continues to be disproportionately impacting BIPOC communities who are also facing higher vulnerability to COVID-19 due to factors like shared housing, lack of access to healthcare, environmental racism, job layoffs, immigration status, employment in the wage economy without worker protections, and more. Soul Fire Farm recognizes that in addition to system and policy change, home and community gardening can fill gaps in food access while bolstering longer term community food sovereignty. So our Soul Fire in the, uh, Soul Fire in the City program, which uh, centers BIPOC folks impacted by food apartheid, offers materials, labor, and guidance to support our community members in Albany and Troy and has established over 40 raised bed gardens to date. Soul Fire Farm thanks you for recognizing and lifting up our work with this award. May we all continue to vision boldly and plant the seeds of health, justice, and liberation. Thank you. Thank you, Taina, and congratulations. So well deserved. Thank you. Next is the Bold Division for Healthy Retail Award presented by John Whalen, documentary filmmaker of the movie Stink, exclamation point, which is so aligned with clean and healthy New York's work, it looks to us like a home movie that features several well-known allies and villains. John and I met at an assembly hearing on toxic chemicals in children's products and have worked together increasingly ever since. He now serves on clean and healthy New York's board of directors and is a Bold Vision honorary host. Take it away, John. Thank you, Kathy, and um, 
congrats again to Clean and Healthy New York. It's an honor to present this award. And as you mentioned, this is the Bold Vision for Healthy Retail, um, which is awarded to a business that has done significant work to sell products that avoid um, or do not contain dangerous chemicals. It's transparent about ingredients and promotes a healthy work environment. I've had a, a chance to check out the website of our winner, and I just wanted to read in their words its vision. Um, the thing that kind of struck me is that I found this vision on its employment opportunities page, which says to me that this isn't like the type of organization that just says things, these hollow words to, as, a, as a marketing ploy, it's in their DNA. When you're applying for a job, you see the vision to create a cycle for food from sustainable farmer to chef to consumer, diminishing the reliance on commercially processed foods, increase local agriculture, commerce, and community health. The second thing that struck me just going through its website was its uh, latest blog post. It had a great quote. It's not easy being green, but it's well worth it. This kind of resonates with me because I think that a lot of people, you know, you'll see something and, you know, we use the finest ingredients and we only use what the FDA says is okay, which we on this Zoom call know is kind of a joke. But this seems like the type of company that is solving problems that most people don't even know about yet. And it's kind of like living, living it. Um, and so I'm proud tonight to present this award to from Clean and Healthy New York to Good Choice Kitchen, Vegan Cafe and Culinary Center to Lori and her team. And I love that we're getting the video of her and her team, right, right where it all happens. Nice. They might be serving someone now. It is a, hi, thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words. It is a pleasure and honor to be recognized as the winner of the Bold Vision for Healthy Retail Award. As a 100% woman-owned small business, my, my primary, primary focus, focus as an, as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur and chef, and chef has, has always, always been supported to alleviate and hopefully make a small, small difference to reduce the harms, harms our earth has endured. By providing organic and sustainably grown local ingredients for a plant-based seasonal menu that creates a sense of appreciation for what our planet has to offer to eat what the earth provides when it provides it. As a born and raised New Yorker, proudly originally from Brooklyn, I have had the immense fortune of moving to an area where I've learned the importance and beauty of our Hudson Valley sustainable farmers. And I know I'm not alone. I am part of a web of concerned citizens. And without those coming before me, I could not have built the four star green restaurant association awarded structure. From our pre and post recyclable floors, energy saving equipment, HV, AC and plumbing, to our compostable and recyclable tank out containers, to our green products that we use to clean the, the cafe and the facility, to the type of cookware we use, it's non-toxic and it provides a form for our food to remain clean from where we got it from the clean farmers through to the plate. We offer cooking classes in order for our customers to be able to take skills to their homes and encourage their shopping at farmers markets and to join community sponsored agriculture memberships. Empowerment is key to our mission and vision of narrowing the gap between consumer and grower. I have found a home for the cafe in Austin, New York, where we offer affordable, good food for a wide socioeconomic clientele. I was drawn to Austin for a few reasons. One of them is the Village and Towns Green Austin Sustainability Partnership, which works tirelessly to bring our community together with green initiatives. There are many other socially responsible entities that I have learned from and continue to carry on this work on a daily basis. Every decision made at Good Choice Kitchen is made with the thought of what impact it will have on the responsibility we have to the health of our customers and the planet. And this brings me to what this award means to me, yet another opportunity to reach out and educate and make others aware that they too can make a difference in their communities 
and thus their world, either by themselves or as part of a community of believers, that every choice we make can either do harm or bring us to a cleaner, healthier world for all its inhabitants. So let's continue to work together and be a leader of our nation that truly we care that anything consumed can be either a detriment or a positive step for the future. So thanks for existing there up in Albany and uh, reaching out to us here in Austin. From all of us at Good Choice Kitchen, thank you. Thank you, John and Lori. Thank you for giving us a window into your, your world. Uh, it's great to know more about your business. We're gonna take a short stretch break, a 10 minute break, uh, and Bobby has a quick reminder for us uh, before we do that. So we'll see you back at 7.35. Take a little, well, a little longer actually, 15 minute. Wait, yeah, 7.30 little stretch break. But first, you, Bobby, back to you. Thanks, Kathy. So in the chat uh, window, you're going to see uh, a reminder that you can bid. Um, and I don't, I think Greg just uh, reposted the link to bid on our silent auction items. There are a lot of really fun ones. I just want to tell you about a couple of them. We've got a pair of diamond earrings. Um, for, for available for auction. We have a, uh, a day at a spa, uh, at Mirabu Spa. You could go kayaking with our fearless leader, Kathy Curtis. Um, we have the, the, we are blessed to have uh, author and expert on green living, Lexi Zizou on our board. And she's willing to sort of do a, how do you remake your home non-toxic uh, consultation um, that you can you can bid on. We've got pillows from Naturepedic. We have uh, an Adirondack getaway. We've got a collection of um, uh, facial products from Beauty Counter. Um, so all of these have been generously donated, and uh, we hope you will go and check them out during this break. It's especially a great time to go when no one else is talking. Um, but don't forget, we're also raising funds for Clean and Healthy New York, and you can do that by texting Bold Vision to 44321 or by donating uh, on the link that's in the website uh, or in the chat window, and uh, we will... Uh, uh, we will take it from there. So just enjoy your break and we'll see you back at 7.30. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Our next award is for a bold vision for healthy manufacturing presented by my dear friend, Faustinia Morrow. Tina is one of the most effective, impactful networkers, strategic thinkers, movers and shakers I have ever known. She's a tireless community organizer in her hometown of Buffalo, New York and far beyond. Her work for justice and equity spans many issues. She served on the Buffalo Environmental Management Council, is a 2019 recipient of the Angel Touching the World Award from Unlimited Possibilities Overcoming Poverty Ministry. She worked with me and Bobby to, at Citizens Environmental Coalition and is a co-founder of Professional Organization of Women in St. Louis, Missouri. And we have a clip video clip from Tina, who will be uh, talking about Xandra Beauty. Wow, thank you, Kathy and Bobby, and everyone on the board there at Clean and Healthy New York. I am Fastenia Morrow, and I am excited to tell you about this amazing young woman, Zandra. You see, I had the distinct pleasure to watch her at nine years old go from a dream to a hobby to a business that now employs not one, but both of her parents. Isn't that amazing? So what can I say about Zandra? I can tell you that she is a force to be reckoned with. I can tell you that I have watched this young lady through her ambassadorship with the United Nations inspire young girls 
and actually really move and inspire young girls at heart like me and actress Viola Davis, who also uses her products. Now let me tell you how far back Zandra and I go. We go all the way back, Zandra, check it out, to Azaria's Innocence. This was her first uh, company name before she, she expanded. And I still have some of that product. <laughs> okay? So, in closing, I am just overjoyed because as I can see the greatness inside of her. She is what Dr. Maya Angelou called a phenomenal woman. And Zandra, what I want to say to you is congratulations. Keep on moving forward. And for all those who are saying how wonderful she is and how wonderful to have this young lady uh, win this award, if you truly want to make an impact in her business, then I would suggest to you that tonight, right now, when this award ceremony is over, go to her page and buy up all her products. <laughs> go into the stores, because she's in, let me see, uh, uh, Whole Foods, Target, Wegmans. She's sold across the world. And I want you to go into the stores Go on Etsy and buy all of her products. And we just have one more thing to say. My nephew wanted to join in because he's been inspired by Zandra. And we just want to say to you, congratulations, Zandra. All right, blessings. That was great. Okay, we're just going to hear really briefly from Allie McPherson. Uh, the principal at Niagara Share, who will be uh, actually presenting the award to Zandra Beauty. And just a little bit about Allie McPherson. She works to foster a globally connected place-based regenerative economy strategy to leverage environmental entrepreneurship by working with private and public sector leaders on new opportunities and possibilities that account for emerging megatrends like climate change, resource degradation, poverty, loss of biodiversity, and access to resources. And Ali is also the vice chair of the Clean and Healthy New York Board of Directors. Take it away, Ali. Thanks, Kathy. Um, well, I, didn't, I don't have to leave home uh, far to find that um, model example with uh, Zandra. And um, I can't think of anyone who uh, deserves this war more than you. And uh, for those that aren't from Buffalo, they wouldn't know that um, this is sort of, uh, this is the second award Zandra's uh, receiving this week. Um, she was um, awarded yesterday by the Western New York um, Sustainable Business Roundtable for her leadership and sustainability. Um, you know, competing against all of the companies um, and manufacturers in um, Buffalo, Niagara. So um, I can't um, say how fortunate we are to honor you here today. And I just want to add to the um, amazing um, remarks we already heard, because not only do you create uh, this beautiful, sustainable product with what I think you say, the yuck-free ingredients, but you have um, put forward a brand that has messaging um, for my daughter and daughters across the world that really is empowering. So you've blended um, the best of of um, clean and sustainable and all the things we fight for at Clean and Healthy New York with um, empowering young women, including my daughter. And we have had the privilege of knowing you for a long time and seeing your business grow into this global brand that it is today. So I am thrilled to award you with the bold vision for healthy manufacturing, Sandra. You're on mute. <laughs> Oh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you guys so much. I loved all of it. Um, hold on, this thing is in my way. Okay. Um, I just want to say thank you everyone so much. I am like overjoyed. I'm just, you know, I wasn't really expecting this too. Like it was just absolutely crazy. So um, 
I want to say thank you for that video, um, all of the beautiful words, you know, um, everything that you said, you know, really, um, uh, yeah, really just about, you know, um, making a sustainable product, you know, but also, you know, making sure that the product is more than just the average, you know, soap and lotion um, that are my brand, what I really try to, you know, focus on is really just drive home the the, the vehicle for change aspect about girl empowerment, inspiration through education, entrepreneurship. Um, so I just want to say thank you guys so much. I really appreciate everything that you um, said, all the love, all the love and support from Buffalo. You know, you guys have been my ride or dies. You've been my biggest support system thus far. So I want to say thank you guys so much. And you know, go Buffalo. And yeah, make sure you guys try the products too. But thank you. <laughs> Okay, great. Congratulations, Sandra. You're an inspiration to us all. Our next presenter of the Bold Vision for Environmental Advocacy Award is Senator or Senate Environmental Conservation Committee Chair Todd Kaminsky. Senator Kaminsky's leadership has done more in two years as chair than the previous 10 years combined. Groundbreaking policies passed under his watch, including the Child Safe Products Act, that was 10 years in the making. Bans on plastic bags and polystyrene, the strongest climate law in the country, and bans on carcinogenic trichloroethylene and the toxic pesticides chlorpyrifos and glyphosate. So we have a greeting and congratulations video from Senator Todd Kaminsky. Thank you, Kathy, and thanks to Clean and Healthy New York for choosing me to present this distinguished award. I'm thrilled to say that New York is moving toward a greener future, and we must continue to work and collaborate with businesses to create a cleaner and more sustainable economy. The New York Sustainable Business Council is taking great steps to make its vision a reality by advocating for critical topics like protecting our drinking water, supporting the legislation prohibiting the most dangerous uses of TCE, and closing the hazardous waste loopholes also banning PFAS in food packaging. The Business Council has also supported the growth and development of re renewable energy and has successfully pushed for the passage and signing of the Safe Child Product Act. Making the fracking ban permanent in this year's budget was also important to the council. And thank you for advocating for work workplace improvement policies like the Paid Family Leave and Wage Theft Act. It's because of the great work from groups like the Sustainable Business Council that we can continue to pass great legislation for our environment and economy. I'm proud to announce that the Clean and Healthy New York's Bold Vision for Environmental Advocacy Award goes to the New York Sustainable Business Council. Here to accept the award is Bob Rossi, Executive Director. Congratulations, Bob, and congratulations to the Business Council. Uh, well, thank you. Um, uh, big thanks to uh, Senator Kaminsky. Uh, we have all benefited and will continue to benefit from his phenomenal work in chairing the Environmental Conservation Committee um, and from uh, the bills he's introduced to his artful uh, defense of those bills uh, when they reach the Senate floor. So um, it's an honor to be introduced by uh, the Senator and um, New York Sustainable Business Council's mission is to advance a vibrant, just, and sustainable economy in New York State. And there are many ways uh, that we approach that, but uh, one critical way is to address the political, the policy and regulatory framework, essentially, that often favors the largest corporations. Uh, we represent over 2,000 businesses from every corner of the state that follow a triple bottom line philosophy, often uh, abbreviated as people, planet, profit. Um, and we believe those values are pervasive, uh, that the vast majority of the businesses, uh, all those small and independent businesses that you know in your communities that are so critical uh, to our economy actually believe in the triple bottom line, even if they've never heard of it. Um, they are also the job uh, drivers of job growth in New York State. Uh, the largest drivers of job growth in New York State um, uh, is our businesses employing fewer than five people. And they, of course, um, believe in taking care of their employees and their customers because they know them. Um, they believe in taking care of their natural environment because that's where they live. 
And so we believe that these businesses um, are essentially like a silent majority and we work to break that silence um, and raise their, their voices. So I'm honored to receive this award, but uh, uh, on behalf of NYSBC, uh, but I feel like there are three main heroes uh, in this effort. So I just wanna prop them up. Uh, one uh, is all the organizations uh, that are uh, uh, like Clean and Healthy in New York and all the organizations uh, in the Just Green Partnership uh, that fight every day for uh, policies that uh, would bring about a cleaner and a healthier New York State. Um, second are the elected officials uh, like Senator Kaminsky and so many others that work to advance uh, those uh, policies in our legislature. And from our standpoint, with respect to this award, uh, the many uh, business owners who, busy as they are, take the time to step up and uh, sign on to actions or provide testimonials or even uh, speak with our elected officials um, about these critical issues. So I'd like to thank all of those businesses that have uh, been a part of these efforts and uh, uh, congrats to all the businesses receiving the awards today. We're just doing our best to connect the dots in these efforts. Um, and we depend a lot on all of you uh, to keep those efforts moving along. Thank you. And thank you, Bob, for your advocacy. It's so many stories I can tell you guys about New York Sustainable Business Council coming through in the clinch. Uh, here to present the bold vision for environmental justice is Cecil Corbin Mark, Deputy Director of Program, uh, Deputy Director and Director of Programs at We Act for Environmental Justice a nationally recognized community-based environmental justice organization. Cecil and I co-lead the Just Green Partnership that Bob Rossi just referred to, um, which is an organ a group of about 50 organizations in New York State working for environmental health and justice for New York's people and communities. He serves on boards too numerous to name, including Clean and Healthy New York's. He's a founding board member of Clean and Healthy New York. Please join me. And he has the dubious distinction, or the distinction, I should say, of being the one little bio that I didn't have to look up or fact check or anything. Cecil is my brother. So please join me in welcoming Cecil Corbin Mark. Kathy, thank you so much for uh, that warm introduction. Um, I just want to thank everybody for being here this evening, and as Kathy said, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, great. I, can, you, can you see me? I'm really excited that if you can see me, because it's been a struggle to get my camera to work tonight. We can see you and we can hear you. Excellent. Uh, I just want to thank everybody who's joined us this evening to support the great work of Clean and Healthy New York. Um, as a founding board member, I am so excited to see the growth of Clean and Healthy New York. Um, obviously, we are in some very tough times, and doing this event virtually for the first time, uh, the organization has pulled us together, and I couldn't be prouder of all the efforts that have gone on. So thanks to Kathy and to Bobby, to their leadership, and for the rest of the staff that support them. Um, it's so cool to be able to, rest, to say the rest of the staff that supports them as Clean and Healthy has had a growth year. Um, we're really proud of all that you guys are doing. So I am uh, given the opportunity today uh, to uh, provide the Bold Vision Award for uh, Environmental Justice. Um, that award this evening uh, is going to be awarded to Soulful Synergy LLC. Um, Soulful Synergy, apart from being just an amazing name. Somebody else. Hello? That was Pat Jenny. Oh, was that Pat? Okay. Um, Soulful, uh, apart from having an amazing name, Soulful Synergy uh, is a full service, socially conscious consulting company that takes a multifaceted approach to sustainability, uh, workforce, and community development. Their goal, as their website says, is to empower people, organizations, and communities 
to thrive by connecting them to opportunities that maximize the resources available to them. Uh, their services uh, extend to workforce development. Uh, they provide a sustainable social impact consulting. Um, and one of the things that I was uh, really happy to read about them is that the, they have a statement on their website that says the keys to a thriving community are the collaborative relationships between people, businesses, nonprofits, and government agencies. We create that soulful synergy to help communities transcend short-term recovery into long-term sustainability. Uh, I am really proud as the treasurer and as a member of the board of Clean and Healthy New York uh, to be able to present the award for Bold Vision for Environmental Justice from Clean and Healthy New York uh, to Soulful Synergy's co-founder, Alejandro Alvarez. Alejandro? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Senso, you took all my punchlines, man. It's <laughs> 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 usually very well. Thank you so much. And I have to say thank you for saying my name so strongly. I can't, I don't think I even say my name that well. Um, but, <laughs> but to everyone. Hermano, here, no problem. Gracias, mi gente. Um, but to everyone here, thank you so much for, for this recognition. I really wish my, my business partner, Dwayne Norris, uh, would be here with me as well. I think my, uh, my, great, my good colleague, um, um, Lily Mosley, should be on the call. I haven't been able to look for her, but I definitely have to give thanks to them as well because, you know, again, uh, the organization is only as strong as its parts, right? And, um, and Soulful Synergy literally is, uh, is an organization that was created from the heart to, to really create Soulful Synergy out there. But, um, but first and foremost, again, though, I really want to thank Clean and Healthy New York for the work that you do, right? I mean, one of the things that we, we really appreciate and are inspired by is that you're not only out there talking about the work and protecting people about these toxic chemicals, but you're out there bootstrapping and, and putting in the work, right? And it's, um, it's very easy to, again, speak about it, but, but to, again, really, you know, put in some sweat and tears into this, it's something else, right? Um, so, again, thank you uh, for the work and, again, for this recognition. Um, to me, personally, it's, it's something that really hits to the heart because, you um, Sustainability was something that um, hit me hard when I when I called uh, the 25 um, uh, I called like crisis right, and it was exactly environmental justice that drove <clears throat> the ideas between Dwayne and I to to create soulful synergy, right? Because um, you know the people that we looked around us that looked, you know, I get again like him and I um, were a lot of people that were suffering out there, and the 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 deeper we went and the more research we did and the digger we, we you know, we dig, um, we recognized that a lot of things, I mean, mostly everything circled around sustainability, right? A lot of the problems that, that, that we could, that we're facing right now um, is all under the umbrella of sustainability. So, so with that said, we, we really created this, this company to, to really figure out ways and how we could take our imagination and how we could, you know, uh, make our, our world healthier again. And really take it and, and bring it to and bring it to our people. I, I would like to, to to read a quote that that really you know resonates with us from Dr. Robert Bullard, which is known who's known for them uh, as the father of environmental justice. He said, "Environmental justice embraces the principle that all people and communities have a right to equal protection and equal enforcement of environmental laws and regulations." America is segregated and so is pollution. Race and class still matter and map closely with pollution, unequal protection and vulnerability. This is a powerful measure that, that illustrates the reality of, of, of what environmental justice truly is, where the whole community has a right to equal protection and equal enforcement of environmental laws and regulation. We must stop the segregation of pollution and furthermore the segregation of opportunities that come with the transition into this new green clean energy, I'm sorry, into this new clean energy economy. Uh, Dr. Bullard, along with many that have and those that continue to fight for environmental justice are driven by atrocities of environmental racism, lack of sustainable development, mis misuse of urban land, industrial facilities sitting in our disadvantaged neighborhoods, the need for community reinvestment, limited housing because of gentrification, transportation pollution, limited access to healthy food. Uh, again, uh, to, to soul farms, I big you up, great work. <laughs> when, I, when I saw the, 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 the work coming in, it was amazing. Thank you for that work. Um, limited work and career opportunities, emergency response quality, and the need for community re uh, resilience. 
the, the it, when social justice gets put in the back seat, the most vulnerable communities will continue to suffer and carry the pains from lack of inclusivity and consideration. It's unfortunate that the people that are least to blame for the current environmental conditions will be the most to suffer. We see, we see this repeat itself over and over. We saw it through Katrina and, and, and many other devastating natural disasters and now during COVID. The sad thing is that if we don't make these much needed changes, it's not just us that suffer, but future generations. We believe this American, Native American proverb said it best. We do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. The good thing is that we have organizations just like yourselves and the work that we're trying to do ourselves here at Soulful Synergy. Um, we, our, our work is, is focused, I would, and leave it here, what our, our, I call our three-pronged approach is workforce development. Um, we work with small businesses and helping them get, obtain their minority and women's business enterprise certification. And we also help these small businesses um, uh, uh, go through an a energy, uh, energy audit through NYSERDA and helping them uh, lower their energy costs called, called the Commercial Tenant Program. Um, within our workforce development program, we focus on um, construction safety trainings because of being one of those, I guess, industries that many of people in the LMI community see as a, as a very easy play to, to, to enter that also provides a great quality of life, right? Once they're, they're able to, to obtain a certain, um, certain experience, right? We also have now currently been providing in partnership with NYSERDA, Will Dan, and, um, and NYIT, the Clean Tech Academy training, where we, uh, we train individuals for 60 hours in the green economy, lighting, HVAC, heating and cooling, and then we also provide them career services. All right, and, um, and then the last thing, like I said, we mentioned is minority business enterprise uh, uh, certification support, just because we wanna help our small businesses and at the same time as they grow, we are going to need a labor force and we hope to provide them the same pipeline. So again, thank you for this opportunity and this award. Again, I'm extremely grateful. And again, Dwayne Norris, my business partner and my teams all feel the same. And again, thank you for all the work that everybody's doing. Thank you, Alejandro, for your words and congratulations for your bold vision. Thank you. Here to present the Bold thank Vision Sustainable Business Award. Here to present the Bold Vision for Sustainable Business Award is Jose Bravo, Executive Director of the Just Transition Alliance and Director of the National Campaign for Healthier Solutions. JTA is a coalition of environmental justice and labor organizations. Together with frontline workers and community members who live along the fence line of polluting industries, they create healthy workplaces and communities. All yours, Jose. Well, thank you, Kathy, and, and uh, congratulations to Clean and Healthy New York. Um, I'm very honored to be able to give this award out to an organization that um, has been in the mix for many, many years. And at the same time, um, when we talk about a just transition, and a lot of us worked and came out of the, the, the initial part of the environmental justice movement. Um, one of the things that we saw was that uh, we were pretty good at dealing with incinerators, toxic waste dumps, and a bunch of other things that were causing um, disproportionate impact in our communities, but we hadn't taken the time out to talk to the workers inside those plants. So we did uh, a, you know, an, an assessment. And lo and behold, uh, workers came to us and said, hey, here's this thing called the just transition. And I say this because um, I'm here to give the award to the Green Worker Cooperative Cooperatives. And I remember Omar 20, maybe I don't want to, you know, put a date on, on us. <laughs> but, you know, 50, at least 15 years ago, coming up to us and saying, hey, you know, we have to um, start thinking about, you know, how we can own some of those businesses, how we can move some of those businesses within our communities. So the Green Worker Cooperative incubates workers, worker owned green businesses to build strong local economy, a, a strong local economy in the Bronx that's rooted in democracy and environmental justice. They do work to support healthy, to support safe, dignified, productive jobs and businesses for the Bronx BIPOC community. Their mission statement 
Uh, the Green Worker Cooperatives is based in the South Bronx and serves immigrant and communities of color. Of color, We build, grow, and sustain worker-owned green businesses to create a strong local and democratic economy rooted in racial and, and gender equity. The vision that they have is that they envision the world where pe all people enjoy an economy that works for everyone, for all. Working cooperatively, we have equitable power, wealth, resources, and nurture healthy relationships with each other and the earth. Like I said before, um, Brother Omar has been at it for a long time. And I hope uh, at some point, Brother Omar could take what, his, what he's learned and what he's done uh, with the Green Worker Cooperatives and, and help us move these model type programs in other places, not just New York and not just the Bronx. Um, we need it out here in California. We need it everywhere. So I'm honored to give Green Worker Cooperatives this award. Yay. Thanks so much, Jose. It's, um, it's an honor and a privilege. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege not just to, to be here, but it's an honor and a privilege to have you as someone who's who's handing this over to me. And so I really appreciate it. Um, I, the, the work of Green Worker Cooperatives comes out of the environmental justice movement. Sure. Uh, it's a product of getting, you know, getting the question, well, if, if we don't get this dirty plant, then what else is there? You know, what are, what's the other thing? What's the alternative? And, you know, after a while you hear that, and your inclination is to you know, go for alternatives, then, you know, there's nothing left to do but create it because, you know, no one's creating it for us. So, so what we do at Green Worker Cooperatives is helping people to actually launch businesses that are owned and controlled by people of the community, by the workers themselves, so that we can actually have a real shift in our economy, a shift that moves the, moves the center of control from capital, from, from money, uh, from those who have it, you know, who aren't in the communities that are being impacted to the people of the communities themselves. And that's when you make that shift and you put people at the center of it, you put people's interests at the center of it, that means you have a, you have a, completely, a complete shift in what's, what's valued, what's considered important. Then, you know, the relationship to the community becomes important. The, the relationship between, between the business and workers and health and safety, those things become important. It becomes important what the conditions of the local schools are, because that's, the, where, that's where your kids go to school. You know, so it, it becomes important, you know, what kind of health facilities are there, because that's where you go. You don't pick up and move town. You don't leave the country. Your business doesn't do it, because if the business does it, it's only because you do it, and all of you do it. So the, the nature, the idea of a worker owned business or a worker cooperative is that people are at the center of it. You put people at the center of it, then you put people at the center of the economy. So that's really what our work was, was created to be. And it's all been, it's been 16 years of, of learning in the whole process. And as a result, you know, we've, we've grown, we've been able to build, build an ecosystem of support uh, around people developing and owning and controlling their own worker co-ops so that now more and more people are aware of it, more and more aware in New York City and more and more aware of others. Um, my, my kids uh, you know, who are here, you know, talk about how they want to start up their own businesses, especially this one here who's, who's talking, she's already got her crew of bakers and they've got a, a cooperative baking business and they've already made sales. So, you know, it's about creating the opportunities for people to really see that, you know, we can create businesses and own them and we don't have to have this image of some great white savior, some great white business that's gonna descend from the sky and create jobs for us, that that capacity is within us. And that's one of the, the greatest, one, one of the great sins of, of capitalism has been that the relation, human relationships have been broken and that we have people who grow up and live with this idea that, that um, you, we can't do it ourselves, that we can't pool our resources and take care of ourselves, 
that we have to rely on some external entity, some external savior in order to do it. So, you know, we're, we're here, we're based in the Bronx. Our connections, you know, go all over the place. So we're about building a movement. So Jose, we're, you know, we want to be where, you know, everywhere, you know, and build real relationships so that it's not just here in the Bronx and New York City, but, you know, we're growing a movement and that movement, you know, is, is widespread. So, you know, that's, that's a bit of the, the work we do. We've got, you know, over 40 different worker cooperatives in all kinds of industries from, uh, from doulas and, and health to solar panel installations uh, to, you know, um, uh, to, to all kinds of artisan crafts and composting. So you name it, you know, there's a worker cooperative that's in that sector. And there, if you can think of it, then there, it can be, you know, you can create and you can have worker cooperatives that are about that. So, you know, we see this work as, as critical. And at the end of the day, it's about shifting what is considered to be ownership, you know, who owns and controls and, you know, creating, creating it so that people are at the center of that. And it's not capital. Uh, it's, not, it's not money with no, no personal interest, no face, no grounding in community. So that's what we're about. And I thank you, you know, for all of you at Clean and Healthy New York for this award, uh, for myself, for all our whole team at Green Worker Cooperatives, our staff, our board, our, our cooperatives, my family here. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations, Omar. And thank you so much for sharing your family with us tonight. Oh, Thanks wow. Yeah. <laughs> what a great roster of businesses. This is what business looks like in the 21st century. These are the new faces of business. And we are so happy to share their and our bold vision with you tonight. Thank you so much. Everyone, please don't forget to register using the link we chatted you to get your organic face mask. And please text to give using the link on your screen. It was lovely to see you all. Now, another word from Bobby, and then Siobhan will announce the auction winners. I can't wait. Thanks, Kathy. So I'm just sharing again. Um, you know, we we put up some pictures on the last slide. I think we missed the, the last slide that had um, some photos from our work. But I think this picture here um, really exemplifies a lot of what Clean and Healthy New York is about. You know, we always believe that together we win. And I feel like the stories that you've heard from everyone tonight and looking in the chats, the way that our groups intersect and synergize with one another um, just really shows the power of collaboration and, um, you know, doing uh, doing it together. And so we've got this, in this picture, you can see Senator Phil Boyle, uh, Assemblywoman Pat Fahey, advocates, Bob Rossi's in that shot. You see, you know, we've got allies from around um, the state. Laura and really, Weinberg. Laura Weinberg, Kate McCardle. I think Cecil is like just off screen. Um, that really, it, it takes all of us coming together from a lot of different perspectives and weaving our work together um, to, to really make change. And this was a moment when uh, we were at the Capitol to uh, make one last push for the Child Safe Products Act to get voted on by the legislature. But day in and day out, um, we are so privileged to work with so many great colleagues. Many of you are here. Um, and it's, it's that collaboration that gives us the greatest power. And we are making change here in New York State. We are making change that has waves across the country. Um, and with your support, we can make even more. Uh, we've got this bold vision of where we're going. You know, to put it another way, we wanna make it so that toxic chemicals are an unthinkable part of humanity's past. And looking at all the businesses that are doing the work across the state, I know that we can get there. So please uh, give generously. We've got our uh, silent auction is technically open for another eight minutes, uh, Kathy. So, you know, you and I could have a brief, folks could open up their uh, unmute and chat while folks get just one last minute to, to go over to uh, make their final bids. If you're uh, in the running for something that you're dying to get, make sure mm -hmm. someone doesn't outbid you. Um, but, you know, I would just, I'd love to open up people to feel free to open up their mics and, and, you know, just have a brief time for folks to comment. Anyone wants to jump in? 
Well, I, for one, have been happy to hear about co companies and nonprofits I haven't known about. So this was great tonight. Uh, hearing and seeing and, you know, you do the work every day and you're like, am I alone in this? Like I said, it's, you're not. I know, you know, we're not the only ones. So thanks for the support and thanks for the uh, inspiration and, uh, you know, you have a passion and, and it keeps you going. But when you hear other people's stories, it's also very inspiring. So thank you, everyone, and congratulations. Thanks, Lori. I want to say congratulations to my big sis, Bobby Wilding. Well done, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Ginger. Congrats. All the way from Michigan. Yep. And yet it's somehow still in the same time zone as New York. It's a miracle, isn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> Got just a couple of minutes. I don't know, Siobhan, can you tell if anyone is actively bidding right now as you're looking at the... Well, I, uh, I have been refreshing the page and um, we did get a number of new bids in uh, during the event. Um, I don't think there's a flurry going on right now, but I'd be happy to like Oh, See, Cecil's Cecil. raising his hand. Cecil. Uh -oh. <laughs> Cecil, Cecil is in a mad flurry right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's saying I can't locate the auction. Oh my God, it's driving me nuts. <laughs> Greg, help Cecil. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to mute myself so you don't hear me cussing that thing. <laughs> You're not bidding on the Adirondack weekend, though, are you? <laughs> yeah. Somebody, no. we we have a few minutes left, and somebody could get that out from under Kathy if they hey. wanted a nice weekend. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Just hurry up and do it so I can get in there last. <laughs> <laughs> Cecil's bidding on the kayak, and I know he's bidding on the kayak. I, Cecil, ha I've taken Cecil out, Jose. He barely fit in that in Jimmy's kayak, boy. Oh yeah. Barely. That's my goal in life to get every staff and board member out in a kayak. I loved it. <laughs> is that you, Lexi? It is. Yeah, I got Lexi. Penny. I'm working on my video. We're at the dinner table. Nobody's bidding on the condoms. Come on, people. I know. Isn't that crazy? Did you say Let's condoms see. or condo? I said oh, condoms. condoms. Let's see if my oh. seven-year-old wants them, Lily. <laughs> Hi, Lily. <clears throat> so uh, so I, I took a meeting with a, a green business developer in uh, New York City. And we, Jeffrey Hollander from Seven Generation and from Sustain, came to the meeting with, and he put a gift pack of the condoms and other things on the table. And no one would touch them. No one yeah. would pick them up. They were embarrassed to do so. And then, you know, Jeffrey said, we said, you know, Jeffrey said, think about all the money you would have saved on seven generation diapers if you only would have used the condoms. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Jeffrey once released me in the seventh generation closet and told me I could take whatever I wanted. And it's, it's a very, it's a interesting mind game because if you didn't take what you were supposed to take, you were, it was noticed. They but knew. I think the condoms on the table is like a barometer. Yes. But there's it's also mentioning, I think that this year's sustained package um, it has like a pretty wide variety yeah, yeah. of there's items. Stuff, so there's like all kinds of good stuff. Yeah. Are they listed? Are they listed in the? Yeah. So um, this year we've got the um, body love bundle, the massage oil, the period essentials, menstrual cup, um, and the lip and body balm. So Something for um, everyone. Plenty of good stuff in there. Oh, and and the good time bundle. Although I'm. 
I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> so you still have two minutes and 15 seconds to bid on that package. Wow. I'm ridiculously excited to hear about who won this, these things. It's nice to see everyone. I know. Yes, it's great to see people's faces. It's so true. It's like medicine. It's my tribe. You know, also, I just... Working. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm not able to... I, I, I got the account and everything set up, but I cannot find the... the Bold vision. No way. So, so I think so you can get the good time bundle somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> this, no, it's just Thank you, options backslash bold vision. Yeah, I think if you try going to just a browser, you might be able to get there. Yeah, go to a browser. Are you, options. Are you on your phone? Yeah, I'm on my phone because the computer was so crazed with. Uh, it's, mm. it's, is it backslash or forward slash? Forward slash. Forward slash, sorry. Yeah, I just didn't. Well, it, if you can't get it, Cecil, I think you should get David Levine to bid for you. There you That's go. That's true. <laughs> who? That's true. What did, what did you say? What did you say, Jose? I said if you can't get it, you should get David Levine to bid, bid for you. Jimmy will do it. Unless oh, can I do that? that? We can. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to know why the, 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 there isn't one of the, the auction items which is flying in a plane with Cecil. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> it could year. also be flying in a plane with Jose. True. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I can't get, yeah. I, what are I you trying up. to bid on? I told you. The Adirondack weekend. Oh, well, I'm not helping you with that. <laughs> oh, my God. Now it gets cutthroat. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it like a, a thing for four people, or is it two people? Is it? It's it's two nights at the Adirondack um, yeah. Trail, 80K Trail. So you can each, get a, each get a night. <laughs> no, it's two nights. <laughs> yes, I know. He said split the night. Yeah. Go together. Okay, I give up. I give up. I give up. Well, let's, let's, let's not uh, hold everybody up. All right. Well, it looks like it closed. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's over. It's closed. But, um... So if everybody's ready, I'm just going to run right yeah. down the list. Okay. We have an Adirondack weekend getaway generously donated by Penny Fujiko Wilgerote. And uh, Kathy is the winner. Yay! <laughs> that one. You're giving that to your daughter so she can get away from her baby, right? <laughs> <laughs> Children are welcome, Lexi. <laughs> So next up, we have uh, all day access to the Spa Mirbeau in Albany, um, donated mm -hmm. by Spa Mirbeau. And the winning bid was placed by David Levine. Thank you, David. Oh, wow. You got it. You know it's not going for me. I you, David, you. you wouldn't believe how many couples go there. Oh. Just saying. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have a bundle of Blaze Pizza gift certificates. Donated, of course, by Blaze Pizza. And the winning bid was placed by David Wilding. Ah. You won, Dave. <laughs> um, David have... always gets the food. <laughs> she always gets a little Z's one, too. Go ahead, sorry. Um, we have the Counter Time Collection by Beauty Counter, and the winning bid was placed by Bobby Wilding. Nice. Good chance oh. to try them out. Um, we have a <clears throat> set of three Ecovative mycelium lamps, um, and a uh, freebie grow your own planter kit thrown in by Ecovative. Um, and that package goes to Ginger Chase. Nice. 
a great in her new condo. Um, we, I love my lamp. I got one last year. Oh, that's right. You got the lamp and, and maybe the teddy bear. Is that right? The teddy bear was a bit of a disaster. She just reminded me, but it's, the lamp is fantastic. And the, disaster was the, lamp. the, lamp the time before that, and she brought it back to New York City on the train with her. And she said it was a great like conversation piece. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so next up, we have um, the one and a half hour Green Your Home session with Lexi Zissou. And the winning bid was placed by Gavin McIntyre. Oh. So you can have a conversation about the Grow Your Own oh, no, I just <laughs> products. My fault, Gavin. It was my fault. <laughs> um, we have, we actually have two sets of the Naturopedic Organic Cotton Pillows. Um, donated by Naturopedic. And the first set goes to Jacqueline Vogel. And the second set goes to Mayumi Wilgerot. Nice. Um, we have a pair of solitaire diamond earrings donated by Sandra Beck. And the winning bid was placed by Patricia Jenny. Nice going, Pat. <laughs> we have an assorted basket of yarns from Darn Good Yarn. Uh, and our winner is Penny Wilgerot. We have another uh, knitting basket donated by Cece's Wool. And that was won also by Penny. <laughs> She's getting all the yarn. Oh, yeah. I'm texting her. Well, <laughs> um, we have a Field Goods gift certificate won by Lexi Zissou. Food for me. Awesome. We have a free cut and blow dry at Hair by Pascal Nicolella. And the winner is Kathy Curtis. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, we have a handcrafted pasta bowl donated by Barbara Costanzo. This one sparked a bidding war, and the winner is Brenda Offsall. Hello, oh, Brenda. Yay. Thank you, Brenda. Former board member. We have a handmade bottle stopper and opener set mm -hmm. donated by Don Orr Jr. And that goes to Jim Curtis. Yay. We have a handmade quilt also donated by Barbara Costanzo. Mm. And that is going to go to Penny Wilgerow. Uh, we have another popular item here. The Honest Weight Food Co-op gift basket is going to Ginger Chase. <gasps> Ginger! And last but not least, we have a kayaking lesson with CHNY Executive Director Kathy Curtis. And the winning bid, I can't tell if we have a typo here. Uh, was the winning bid placed by Kathy Curtis or was that? <laughs> it was Jim. It was Jim. Okay. <laughs> that was for me. I just looked. That's awesome. <laughs> Sweet. I should be um, <laughs> okay, so that is it. Thank you so much to all of the folks that donated items and that bid. We really appreciate it. Okay, thanks for all of the presenters, really. I thought it was great. 